So here's a sleeper of an issue. At the top of the show today, we talked about how Republicans are so far giving up the opportunity to run on gay marriage, the traditional beloved wedge issue. But their other traditional beloved wedge issue is, of course, abortion rights. We here at The Rachel Maddow Show have been looking into this issue for this year's midterms for a couple of weeks now. And although it is not getting a lot of coverage, I think we can say that in a kind of quiet, sleepy way, the Republican Party is, without actually talking about it, this year nominating a group of candidates for top-of-the-ticket races that are more extreme on the issue of abortion than any other slate of top-of-the-ticket candidates in any year. Now, that assertion is the product of our review of these candidates' positions. It is open to debate, and I'd be happy to debate it with somebody, but so far, nobody's debating this. The reason that we're covering this tonight is because I think maybe we ought to be. Even if you just look at the United States Senate, even if you just look at Republican nominees and frontrunners for the Senate this year, the slate is amazing. Take, for example, Sharon Engel, the candidate Republicans chose to take on Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid in Nevada. Here's what Ms. Engel had to say back in January about abortion rights for the victims of rape and incest. Is there any reason at all for an abortion? Uh, not in my book. So I'm... in other words, rape and incest would not be something? You know, I'm a Christian. Right. And I believe that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives and that he can intercede in all kinds of situations. And we need to have a little faith in many things. That was January. In June, Sharon Engel shared the advice she would give to girls and women who she thinks should be forced to carry their rapists' babies to term. When, you know, a, a young girl is raped by her father, let's say, and, and she is pregnant. I mean, how do you explain this to her in terms of wanting her to go through the process of having the baby? I think that two wrongs don't make a right. And I have been in the situation of counseling young girls, not 13, but 15, uh, who have had very at-risk, difficult pregnancies. And uh, my counsel was uh, to um, look for some alternatives, which uh, they did. And they found that they had uh, made what was really a, a lemon situation into lemonade. So Sharon Engel, again, this is the Republican nominee for U.S. Senate for the U.S. Senate seat currently occupied by Harry Reid. She not only thinks a pregnant teenage rape and incest victim should be forced to carry her pregnancy to term, Sharon Engel thinks of being a pregnant raped teenager as a lemon situation that can be turned into a rape and incest lemonade situation. So that's Sharon Engel. Then there's Kentucky Republican Senate nominee and good friend of the Rachel Maddow Show, Rand Paul. Uh, Dr. Paul gave an interview to a local Kentucky newspaper back in January. He confirmed to the Middlesbrough Daily News that he is, in fact, pro-life, saying that the only time abortion should be legal is, quote, in the case of the mortality of the mother. Then the paper asked the inevitable follow-up question, quote, what about instances of rape or incest? Do you think that in these cases the decision should be left to the government rather than the families? Rand Paul replied, quote, in cases of rape, trying to prevent pregnancies is obviously the best thing. The morning after pill works successfully most of the time. Ultimately, we do better if we do have better education about family planning. Better education about family planning for rapists. He's being asked about rapists there and people committing incest. He says they just need to plan better for these families that they're making. We've been trying for two days now to get a clarification from the Rand Paul campaign about his position on abortion, about whether if there is an instance of rape or incest resulting in pregnancy, he definitely thinks it should be illegal for a woman to get an abortion. So far, he will not tell us. Neither Rand Paul nor anyone from his campaign will call us back. We did, however, find this on his website, a questionnaire from the Kentucky Right to Life Association. For the question, do you oppose abortion in cases of rape and incest, Rand Paul checked yes but he still won't return our phone calls. In the great state of Colorado, that state's primaries are not until next week, but the current frontrunner for the Republican nomination for Senate in that state is a man named Ken Buck. Watch how quickly Ken Buck signs himself up for the Rape Victim Pregnancy, pregnancy Monitoring Caucus. How do you feel about abortion? Are you for abortion, against abortion, if you're for it? And what instances would you allow for abortion? I am pro-life, and I'll answer the next question. Um, I, I don't believe in the exceptions of rape or incest. Colorado's Ken Buck getting right to the point, jumping right in line with Sharon Engel and apparently with Rand Paul. 
All three candidates campaigning for the United States Senate as small government conservatives, all maintaining that government should be big enough that it should monitor every single pregnancy in the country to ensure that every single woman who becomes pregnant is forced by the government to carry that pregnancy to term. Women who are raped or who are the victims of incest should have their pregnancies monitored by the federal government so that the government can ensure that they are forced to give birth to the child that is the product of rape or incest. This is a position that was beyond the pale even in fringe anti-abortion politics not very many years ago. The idea of exceptions for rape, incest, and the life and health of the mother has been the bright line for even strongly anti-abortion candidates for a very long time. But apparently those days are over. Nobody's really talking about it, but this year's crop of Republicans believe that women should be forced to bear rapists' children. When I called this a sleeper issue, what I meant was that they're not apparently trying to make this a national issue. They're not trying to run on this as a national issue. I can understand why. But maybe Democrats should be making this a national issue. It is not unusual to see Republican Senate candidates oppose abortion rights. In a review of the abortion positions of this year's crop of new Republican Senate candidates, though, the radicalness of these candidates' anti-abortion positions does stand out. It stands out, we think, based on our review, uh, to a historic extent. I don't know of a slate of top-of-the-ticket candidates all fielded in any one year in American politics that has been this radical on abortion issues. So why have we heard so little about it? Why have we heard so little about it from these Republicans who have such strong views on abortion or from their Democratic opponents? Joining us now is Princeton professor, columnist for The Nation, and MSNBC contributor Melissa harris Lacewell. Melissa, thanks for coming back and joining us. Oh, of course, anytime. So what would be the consequences of having a whole bunch of new sitting senators elected to the U.S. Senate who are opposed to abortion, not just in all regular cases, but also cases in which the pregnancy resulted from rape or incest? Well, I mean, I think we, we've already seen the consequences of having uh, a significant portion of even one party, even the party out of power, um, with a very strong anti-reproductive choice agenda. We saw it, for example, in the health care fight, where somehow you know, abortion became the central issue uh, in a comprehensive uh, health care reform bill. The central issue became controlling women's right to choose, controlling women's fertility, uh, but not giving women the ability to control their own, but having the government do it. Uh, so I think clearly every time we move more aggressively against women's reproductive rights, uh, the more that we will see the consequences uh, show up in everything from health care policy to, um, you know, potentially actually moving towards reducing the opportunities for women to, uh, you know, actually find healthy, safe termination services. But why is it that you, th why, why do you think that abortion politics that used to be confined only to the real fringe of the anti-abortion movement uh, are now mainstream enough for Republican Senate candidates to be adopting them, not just one, not just two, but a whole slew of them. How did, how did even anti-abortion politics in mainstream electoral politics get so fringy? <laughs> well, you know, uh, you've been doing a lot of history tonight, and so I just want to pause and maybe do a quick history lesson here uh, and remind your viewers that what's happening is we're in a period of deep economic anxiety. And often when America is in a period of economic anxiety, it starts looking around for individuals to blame. And, and, the, and some, sometimes the very best place to start asserting control is right in the middle of a woman, in her uterus. Um, the fact is that there's been a lot of discourse about women's reproduction. On the one hand, there's this anxiety about the derogatory anchor babies, right? The idea that there's a population that is over-reproducing, and these women should be shunted out of the country, they should be, um, you know, uh, criminalized, and their children should not be given citizenship rights. On the other hand, there's an anxiety about wanting, particularly middle-class white women, to produce more babies. Because, see, what middle-class white women have done is gone off and get careers and become equal in their marriages. And so marriage equality is not just about those scary same-sex people, but also about these assertive women who are equal in their marriages and therefore not producing enough white children to counter back all of these bad anchor babies. So there is a whole set of very deep racial 
and economic anxieties that always emerge whenever we start looking at politicians wanting to talk about controlling the fertility and particularly the reproductive choices of women. Why do you think the Democrats have been gun shy so far about making an issue of this? I mean, these are really extreme anti-abortion positions. And I know that Democrats have sort of lost the taste for fighting on the abortion issue. But in this case, it sort of seems like you'd expect them to be crowing about this. You know, I think there are probably two reasons. One, I think it's very important to take um, those who have a, a religious and moral objection to abortion very seriously when they say that they believe that, uh, that a pregnancy termination is murder. And the fact is that, that if you believe that, right, it, it's, you simply can't really have a conversation around when is it okay to commit murder and, and, and when isn't it, right? So part of it is that there's a, there's a very strong sort of position uh, for those who are, who are against it on these kind of moral or ethical grounds. And by the way, I, I respect that position. I just don't think it should be a matter of law. I think individuals have a right to hold that opinion. Uh, but I think that precisely the kind of government we have is that those positions should be protected as well as the right to choose for those who don't believe that the termination of a pregnancy it constitutes murder. So part of it is it's hard to have the conversation because there's not a lot of common ground. But the other piece of it is Democrats just haven't done a very good job about redefining ethical questions and normative questions from a progressive agenda right. Uh, perspective, right? So they continue to kind of cede this ground to conservatives. It's, it's still more of the same work we've been needing to do for a decade. Melissa Harris Lacewell, Princeton professor, uh, columnist for the Nation, MSC contributor, MSNBC contributor, and uh, somebody who is very, very smart, who I always enjoy talking to. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Melissa. Rachel. Really appreciate it.